Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in today. We're going to do a very special unboxing here. I've got a couple of the Aurora Miniatures HO Scale SD60F locomotive. We're going to do an unboxing. We're going to test it out, see how good it is. I'm going to give you my thoughts and uh, tips with this locomotive. And we're going to talk about uh, some of the controversy surrounding this particular unit. So all aboard, we've got a review to do. So with the box, it's a very standard size box for HO scale. You've got really nice artwork across the front, although that's not an SD60F locomotive. It would be nice if there was an SD60F locomotive on the front, preferably in the CN paint scheme, because that's primarily what was done. On the side, you've got your label. This one says that I've got a CN stripe or zebra unit in DCC and sound, and it's number 5519. My other one is also 5555. Overall, the artwork is really nice. And there's a lot of information on all sides. And it's just plain on the back. So for these locomotives here, they were actually made in the Bowser factory. So I would expect that a lot of the same standards for Bowser will apply to these Aurora miniature locomotives. I'm a big fan of Bowser. So I expect the same level, if not more, level of detail. And here you can see, in all its glory, the CN Zebra unit, 5519. And uh, you get your basic locomotive screwed to the U-plate. I'm going to call it a U-plate <laughs> because uh, it's in the shape of a U. And uh, it's usually screwed from the bottom to the fuel tank. You get some extra bits in there. And uh, you get the plastic shell covering it. Now before we dive into the actual locomotive. They do provide you with a decal sheet. Which does come with a few more decals like safety striping and uh, fire extinguisher logos probably won't be using any of this but uh, it's nice of them to include it and you also get your user manual uh, I always enjoy seeing these computer renderings of the actual locomotive and they give you all the information, how to remove the shell. You can access your decoder just by removing a little piece of the roof hatch there. This does come with lock sound, so there will be full breakdown of all the sounds and functions, CV values, you name it, it's all there. All the light functions and whatnot as well. And it even shows you where everything is plugged into, like auxiliary one, auxiliary two, etc., etc. They really break it down so that they're giving you all the information. Let's get to the good part. Only one piece of foam that was used to hold it in. That's fine. The extra bits you get, extra roller bearing caps just in case you do lose yours. There she is. That looks amazing. And there's no broken parts or anything like that. I've checked both of them and yeah, they're both fine. There's so much that can happen 
during the entire shipping process of these locomotives or many other products from many different manufacturers. Most of these are made in China, so of course they have to be shipped via shipping container to North America. And in most cases they're shipped to a port and then they are shipped by train to their final destinations. So if there's a few pieces that are off or not lined up properly, or if it got bumped around a little bit, please understand that there's a lot that this locomotive is going to go through before it actually gets to your layout itself. All right, while we're getting a closer look at this locomotive, let's list off the number of features that this particular locomotive has. With this locomotive, just like many other locomotives, you will have things like headlights, cab lights, step lights, and also you're going to now start getting or seeing more locomotives with roller bearing caps. This basically means that you're going to see the wheel rotating on the outside in the very center there when it's uh, in motion. A lot more locomotives have the nose mounted classification lights which will light up red, white, or green and that's usually on both sides of the nose. A lot of locomotives also have light up number boards and ditch lights as well, just like this one. It has a really nice fuel tank for those long distance travels. This one even has rotating fans on the back. It's also said to have a version of keep alive or stay alive. And these are apparently really good pullers as well, giving it a good amount of weight. Aurora Miniatures has their own version of a coupler and you'll notice that there is no whisker on it, but we'll see how well it stacks up against a KD. Also, a lot of brands now are using the rubber MU hoses. These ones though are not, they are plastic. So be very careful when handling your model. This does also have separately applied grab irons, wind shades, or window shades, and the horn right on the top there. A winterization hatch, perfect for the Canadian climate. And all the under details as well, like sanding lines and all the piping that is necessary. On the back, there's no plow but you still have your coupler cut lovers. No ditch lights on the back of this particular unit, but you do have all your separately applied grab irons going up the back. The Nicene logo, crisp painting right along end to end on this one. And uh, again, no whisker on this uh, coupler. But here's another angle, just so you can see all the details. Here's what I find to be a really good look at the trucks. They are very well detailed. Very nice. And they'll look even better when they're on the rails. Two years ago when this locomotive was announced, right before or during the earliest parts of COVID, I was really excited. I had something to look forward to, but having something like this happen at that particular time really delayed the entire process. However, I feel that Aurora has knocked this one out of the park. Visually, this is an amazing looking locomotive. It's, it's super beefy and it just, it screams locomotive power, rolling thunder, and it really gets you excited to run trains. Now, of course, I wanted two because they look even better in pairs. And typically, and prototypically, they would run in sets of two, even three. 
Now where three might be overkill for my layout, I was still very much excited to pick up two of these. Now it looks good, but does it sound well and function well? Let's take a look at that next. Okay, so we've got the locomotive here on the programming track. I use the ESU lock programmer to do all my changes. For this here, all I'm doing is changing the number from 03 of the decoder to 5519. I like to do that right out the, at the gate because when it comes to testing both of them running together at some point, I'm going to want to address one as 5519 and 5555. So I've already done that here. Very straightforward stuff if you've ever used a lock programmer. So we're going to jump right ahead and we're going to look at uh, the lighting features and we're going to listen to some of the sounds as well. So this here, this is the startup sequence of this locomotive. Right out the gate, it's not that loud. To some, that might be a good thing. For me, because I have a small space and I don't like my locomotives being blasting their sound at me, I'm okay with that. But you're able to adjust the volume using your lock programmer or however it is that you adjust your CV values. Adding power to the track as well. Not sure if you can see it, but there are LED lights for all four steps on both sides here. There is also a light right by the cab door. And that's basically power on, that's what you get. These sound great, by the way. So then we've got our bell. We have our horn. Basically that's your F2. So if you hold it down, you get a longer bell. F3, very important one. That'll be your coupler clank. And then of course the coupler release as well. Now, on most locomotives that are DCC and sound, your zero is going to be your headlight. Helps if I put it into forward. There we go. Now, that's another great feature there. When you press to go into reverse, or if you press to go forward, it does make a sound as well. That's really neat. No other locomotive has that as far as what I've seen, but somebody let me know if that's something that most locomotives have and I just haven't noticed. F5. F5 is going to be your classification lights. Are we still going forward? Yeah, I think so. So you've got your red, you've got your green, and your white. You can see them all represented right there on the hood. And it also, it's both sides of the hood as well. So they have it so that you basically, you press it once to turn it on. You press it again to turn it off. Press it again and it goes to the next color on and then off and then on again to go to the last color. That way you're basically cycling through them. F6, as always, is your ditch lights. And then we get into the really, really crazy ones here. So I'm just gonna turn this off and I'm going to dim that so that we can focus more on the other sounds and features. 
All right, so now we're going to focus on some of the other smaller sounds. F7 is going to be your wheel flange, but that's typically while it's moving. So let's see if we can... Okay, and uh, we'll go in reverse here just to... Neat. Okay, cool. Now you'll have things like your pry mover, um, your drive hold, independent brakes, but then you get something as cool as this. This is uh, one of the neatest features that you'll probably see on this locomotive, and it's the radiator fans. Taking a look at the fans on the top there, the two that are independent and the one that's under the winterization hatch, they all spin, but they also have sound to go with the spinning. Now, usually the fan will make the fan sound when the F8 is activated, but right now we just got the fans going here, just to show you the mobility of it. Such a cool feature. It does have quite a significant power draw when using it, so you probably won't be using it all the time, or at least if you've got a lot of locomotives in, in, on, in motion and on the table at the same time. But still, nonetheless, such a cool feature, and I'm starting to wish all my other locomotives, no matter what brand, had this feature as well. When we go all the way up to function 22, this one's kind of neat and very different. It does make a sound and it turns on the cab lights. It's basically the cab door. And when you open it, it does light up on the inside there. It's very hard to tell because I've got a bright light on this so that you can see all the details, but we could probably take a closer look at that uh, at another time. There are a bunch of other functions here that you can use, handbrakes, dimmer for the uh, the headlight, air compressor, sanding valve, short air let off, brake set and release, air dryer, uh, the engine compartment doors, which is F23. Doesn't sound like much, but it's there. All right, so before we go over to the track, let's talk a little bit more about this specific locomotive because it seems like it's taken quite some time to get to stores, especially Canada. The US did receive their lot first. Uh, I'm not sure if there was a shipping delay with Canadian retailers. However, before a lot of Canadian retailers could even offer this product to the public, there was a public service announcement that was made by a Canadian retailer. Let's take a look. The post reads, It has come to our attention that Aurora Miniatures SD60F locomotive has significant drivetrain design flaw. Many of you have placed orders for these locomotives with us and are anxiously awaiting their arrival. After discussion with the manufacturer and with several other reputable Canadian model train retailers, we have asked Aurora to hold off on our order until they remedy the problem. We believe in ethical business practices. We cannot in good conscience sell a product to our customers that the manufacturer has acknowledged and is delivered from the factory with a design flaw, resulting in a performance issue which many of our customers would find unacceptable. So basically, without any testing whatsoever, they deem this locomotive to be unfit to sell. Well, I haven't found anything wrong with it. So what's the big deal? A few days later, Aurora responded. 
Our Canadian shipment of HO scale GMD SD60Fs has arrived and we have begun distribution to Canadian dealers starting today. This shipment was delayed by approximately 20 days as we missed the sailing date of a container ship bound for Canada. This resulted in the American dealers receiving their allocation of about 2.5 weeks ahead of the intended simultaneous arrival time. During this gap in time, we received feedback from American customers that due to a unique truck design of the model, some of the models exhibit unintended, less than ideal driving characteristics when running light at certain speeds. Our engineering team is aware of the problem. However, a thorough remedy to the issue is weeks or months away, as the, the reported issue is not caused by a defective component that can be immediately replaced. They go on to say, one ill-informed Canadian hobby shop wished their reservation to be held back for delivery, a request which we would have complied had they filled out the request in a normal manner. However, this particular Canadian hobby shop tried to coerce and intimidate us into compliance by dragging multiple unrelated parties into what could have been a private conversation. This was completely unnecessary and is the most unprofessional business conduct and despicable behavior we have witnessed in our short existence as a model train manufacturer. Where one Canadian retailer decides to hold off on their order, another one steps in to help out Aurora and make sure that these get to market. Otter Valley Railroad stepped up to help Aurora Miniatures. This is what Lorn had to say. We have identified a teething issue, yes, but this is still one of the nicest models out there. We want to make sure we are standing by Aurora and the consumer. Otter Valley did end up taking their units, but spent a day testing every single unit for any defects with a dedicated team. Lauren goes on to say, We brought in an army of local club members, OVR staff, and friends of Otter Valley to test the delivered units. Most have over 20 to 30 years of experience and know what to look for. Typically, what you want to do when you get a new locomotive is you want to break it in by running it backwards and forwards with a load or even without, depending on the locomotive itself. You want to do it for at least uh, 30 minutes in each direction, but this one will require about an hour in each direction. Okay, so I've currently finished my break-in period for both of my SD60Fs here. Uh, I've got 5519 on the left and 5555 on the right. I have done the break-in for both, one hour both ways pulling loads. I'm going to test them now as an mu unit and see how well they compare to each other. So I already have them going in the direction and they seem to be keeping up quite well with each other and that's only speed step 10 I'm gonna stop them reverse and go back to 10 they don't seem jerky And they look really good. The 5555 is going a little bit faster forward, but that's okay. Let's test them out pulling.
Congratulations, Aurora Miniatures. This is a success. And I'm looking forward to even more from you guys in the near future. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Go Vier, Go Home. We'll see you next month for even more.